Dr. Roberto Aguilera, professor in ConocoPhillips NS ERC AER I chair in the Department of Chemical and Petroleum Engineering at the Schulich School of Engineering, University of Calgary. Quite a long <laughs> title, eh? Well, good morning and thank you for this interview. Everyone is talking about PCOIL. Do you think PCOIL is real? Not from the definition that you just mentioned. Eventually, there is going to be a peak in oil production, a maximum peak, and a maximum peak in gas production. But the question is if that peak is going to occur because of depletion or because of substitution to other sources, perhaps unconventional or perhaps non-fossil. The work that we have done indicates that there are plenty of oil resources and plenty of gas resources that will take us for several decades. So I want to give you a very clear example of what I mean. Uh, this uh, slide that I'm showing you in here comes from a presentation in Houston last year, in April of 2007 at uh, the SPE meeting. And it's very important because the data comes from very solid sources. So the data is correct. In this particular case, the data comes from the EIA and the Department of Energy. In the U.S. government. In the U.S. So it's, it's very solid data, statistical data. And then uh, the person that presents this, uh, you, you notice that it comes, for example, in this case, from Simmons and Company International. That's Matthew Simmons, yeah. That's Matthew Simmons, yeah. It says, solid facts point to world oil supply now peaking. EIA DOE data shows global crude supply reaching peak output in May of 2005 at 74.1% million barrels per day. Over the next 20 months, declines have steadily grown. So that's correct. That's real data. But I think the conclusion is wrong. Okay. You keep examining data, and then you keep saying peak oil, and once again, May 2005, the month our 21st century energy war began. And of course, once again, it's based on solid data. So what I have done is I have taken data from the same sources of information that I mentioned in here. And then when I do that, I come and I show the data that happened in May 2005. And it's certainly as published, as shown in those presentations that I indicated. But now I come to the same source of information and I say, well, what happens three years later? Fast forward to January, February, March of 2008. Okay, I'm so, going to back you a little bit here. Yeah. The data that is showing on your screen, January 08, February 08, March 08, shows 85 point something million barrels a day. So you are saying that there has been an increase over the last three years. Yes, but I want to clarify one thing. I have two columns in here. The first column is all liquids, including oil, in, uh, uh, conventional oil, unconventional oil, NGLs. natural gas liquids. The one that was being used by Simmons in here was conventional oil, and this is 70.4 in May of 2005, but you are absolutely right. What I'm saying is the conventional oil, if you look at January and February, as posted the 22nd of May of 2008 by EIA is bigger. So that means then that there will be a new peak. So the way this works, and the way it has worked throughout several decades in the industry, is that somebody looks at uh, a high rate, for example, May of 2005, and they say, this is the peak. If there is subsequent uh, information, 
uh, indicating that, yeah, there is a decline, then promote that peak. Keep saying, see, there is a peak, there is a peak. But, ev yeah, but eventually, maybe we reach this situation that I mentioned January, February, where the oil rates are bigger. Then what you do is you rationalize the data and you say, well, now this one is the real peak. And then go back to the other and continue with add loop. And this has happened since the late 1800s. It's not the first time that people are talking about this. Mm -hmm. So we think then that certainly uh, there is a lot of oil. And what I have in this graph is demand and supply. So you look at different quarters starting in the year 2006. And the blue line is the demand. And you see that the demand has once in a while gone above the supply line, which is the magenta line. But at this point, when there is a big increase in demand, there is a big increase in supply. Source for this information, once again, e IEA, uh, May 13, 2008. And it tells me then that uh, the, 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 there is not a problem in reality. But to be fair, um, we are seeing supply problems growing throughout the world. The big fields, we are not finding more and more of them. In fact, we are struggling to even maintain production and maintain replenishment. So things don't just fall off a cliff. But what we are seeing the last couple of years is a growing evidence that the suppliers are struggling at a time when demand is growing by between a million and two million barrels a day consistently every year. So, uh, you know, even if we have not touched peak yet, are we closing, or are the signs now in place to say that we are near the peak? Well, uh, if you observe, for example, this, this graph, and you compare the curves that I have in here for supply and demand, what we are saying in this graph is that the demand is being met. However, I have another curve in here that is the oil price. And that's the green one, and that's the one that uh, you, you, you are really interested in, in your question. So what you see is that here in the second quarter of 2007, then we start seeing a dramatic increase in the oil price. I have in here only to the end of the first quarter of 2008. It's been gone bigger now, 130 and so on. But what this graph is telling me is that the fundamentals are not being met. We see increase in oil price continuously, the green line, as we see also continuous increase in the supply. And they go almost parallel. So the fundamentals are not there. Something else is going on. And to try to answer your question then, we can look at this particular graph. Why the large oil prices? And I think it's not because of fundamentals. In the previous graph, I was so showing you that in the first quarter of the year 2008, this was published in April 11 of this year. The supply was 87.2 million barrels of oil per day. The demand was 86.6 million barrels of oil per day. It was smaller. And yes, the oil price keep increasing. So why then the increasing oil price? Well, potentially there are many reasons that I think are valid. A uh, very important one is that we have a very weak US dollar. And of course, as you know, the oil is traded in US dollars, so that's going to be reflected in there. Political instability, we have many problems around the world in some of the big producing countries, so that also is helping to the increase in the oil price. Cartels, today, most of the oil production, gas production, and so on, is in the hands of countries that are forming cartels that increase the oil price. This one, I think, is very important, commodity manipulation by speculators. That also plays a very important role. The power of national oil companies, as I mentioned a moment ago, and very important, fear factor. 